In the Outlands, it's not too uncommon to find the remains of some poor sod off the side of the trail. However, this particular corpse gives you a feeling that you just can't shake. From where you stand, it looks like it's twitching? And as you take just a few steps closer, the shuddering corpse splits open. From inside spills out thousands of black flies grown fat on rot. And while they might appear at first glance to be ordinary insects, the creatures start to coalesce into a humanoid form. It's at this point which you notice each of these tiny creatures bears the approximation of a human face. A devilish mockery of the creature that birthed them. Roll for initiative. Hello and welcome to Monster of the Week, the show where we look at creatures from older editions of Dungeons and Dragons and bring them to light for use in your 5th edition game. My name is Josiah, also known as Dungeon Dad, and today we are talking about something pretty disgusting. This week's creature is known as the Ruin Demon. It's guaranteed to revolt your players and it has a lot of uses both story-wise and in combat. At the very least, this creature is guaranteed to create a memorable encounter. So just what exactly is this thing? Well, it is a swarm, technically. I mean, it's one creature, but it's a bunch of tiny creatures that swarm together in a hive mind. A demonic hive mind, which is probably the worst kind of swarm. In real life, swarms of any animal, whether it be birds, bats, or insects, can be a little freaky to look at, but... They don't coalesce into a humanoid creature and then try to attack you, so that's always good. However, this creature does. And today we're going to talk about just what it can do in battle some modifications that we could make to this creature to make it a little more interesting, and of course some ways that you can use it in your game. So first up, now before we get into its actual actions and different things it can do in combat, let's talk about movement. This creature has a walking speed of 20 feet, which basically means when it's in its humanoid form and actually taking steps forward, it cannot move generally as fast as most other creatures. However, it has a fly speed of 30 feet, which is a little bit faster, and generally it's going to be flying around or at least hovering above the ground because why would it be walking? I guess if it's trying to be extra intimidating, maybe it might take a few steps, but realistically, there's no reason it would ever do anything besides hover. And of course, as a swarm, it is resistant to regular types of damage, meaning slashing, bludgeoning, or piercing, even from magical weapons. This of course is because, as a swarm of tiny creatures, when you're slashing at it with a sword, you might cut a few of them down, but ultimately you're not doing as much damage as, say, a fireball would. This also means it can move through someone's square unimpeded. A swarm is able to share a square with another creature, which is never a good thing for the creature it's sharing a square with anyways. And this also means it can fit into weird places. Any space that one of these creatures can pass through, the entire swarm can pass through. So if you've barricaded the door to try to keep this thing out, and there's even a tiny little hole in one of the walls of the structure you're taking right refuge in, the entire thing is going to be able to snake its way through that hole. And of course, like every other swarm, they're also immune to effects like charm, restraint, paralysis, that kind of stuff. But that's just swarms 101, so no need to really get too much into that. Now this creature, as written, really only has two major attacks. Its first attack, which is kind of its go-to slam attack, is called Vile Swarm. The way this attack works is just like a regular melee attack. The Ruin Demon smashes down with one of its big swarm fists on top of another creature, and it takes some damage. What makes this attack a little bit different, however, though, is that creature needs to make a dexterity save. And on a failed save, some of the swarm stays behind and bites at the target, causing another couple d8 worth of damage, every round until they can make that dexterity save. It's not a horrendous amount of damage if you fail your save, but it's enough to make it hurt. This is especially dangerous if someone is downed by one of these creatures, not necessarily killed, but knocked unconscious. Because as the swarm essentially just seeks to devour everything in its path, if some of those bugs are still on you when you go down, they're not gonna stop attacking you, so you're gonna fail a couple death saves. Unless of course one of your other party members is kind enough to help you out. The Ruin Demon also has a trait where if another creature starts its turn within 5 feet of the Ruin Demon, it takes a little bit of damage as well. Again, this is just pushing the image of this massive swarm of these jittering little creatures that are just gnawing at you every chance they get. So if you start your turn too close to this thing, it's gonna do a little bit of damage. But none of that is really anything compared to its signature ability, Vile Infestation. This attack is absolutely disgusting. Essentially what happens here is the entire swarm zeroes in on a single creature. Every one of these tiny insects individually goes inside of that creature via the mouth, ears, and eye holes. Just saying that is giving me goosebumps. But what happens here is the ruined demon effectively has that creature dominated. 
It is literally puppeting them around with the insects inside of it. But it's worse than a domination spell because it also hurts the creature who's being affected by this ability every round that it stays inside of them. And then of course it's gonna make that creature attack its friends. The only way to get this creature outside of one of the characters once it's gone inside of them is for that player to make a successful constitution check. Once they make the save, the creature is expelled from their body. There are a couple spells that might help out here too if say the party cleric or wizard has uh, banishment prepped or even protection from good and evil might help you out here. And of course any of the spells that help them make that save like guidance for example. But at the end of the day, this is a great ability for shutting down a particularly powerful threat or turning a powerful melee centric character on its allies. And that's all good and fine, but the true value here is how flavorfully excellent this ability is. It will be something that that character affected by will remember for the rest of their D&D career. That is guaranteed. Disgusting! Now when it comes to actually modifying a creature, this one starts out relatively simple and I think it does pretty much everything it needs to do. It's very rare that I'm just happy with the creature as is when I read it in the monster manual or the demonomicon from fourth edition in this case, but this might be one of those times. However, there are a couple things that we might be able to add to this. I didn't put in the actual stat block that you'll find in the description below, but if you like these ideas and find them interesting, they might be things that you could add on yourself. The first of which is a scrying ability. I don't necessarily mean magical scrying, but maybe one fly from the swarm kind of goes ahead to scout out locations where it can feed. Maybe that single fly, given that they all have a hive mind, can communicate back to the others and let them know, hey, there's a village here with some nice tasty peasants, come on over. This is also one of those things too, where if the players happen to notice this weird fly with a human face, it might foretell of this creature's coming and they can prepare for it. That was just kind of an idea I had and it's not really too complicated to write in, it's just something you could do really with this creature. The other thing you might want to consider is giving it an actual fly speed. So the creature as it is now has a 60 foot fly speed, but it can only hover, meaning it can't get much higher than a couple feet off the ground. If you actually gave it a fly speed, that would enable it to go up into treetops and kind of soar across open water and all that good stuff. I don't think this is really necessary, which again is why I didn't add it into the main stat block, but if your players have several party members who can fly, whether by magical means or otherwise, it might be a smart idea to give this creature a fly speed so it can actually get to them. But that's more personal preference and I will leave that in your hands. The last thing here, if you really want to make it a bit tougher for maybe a stronger party or if you have a party that's a little bit higher level, is you could make it carry some kind of disease. I mean, it's a fly that feasts on flesh. That's some good alliteration right there. So naturally, whether it's feeding on some fresh meat or something totally rotten, either way, it's going to end up carrying a few diseases. And as a powerful demon, it probably doesn't care much about hygiene. So if one of your players gets infested, it's very possible they may contract one of the diseases from the monster manual. Again, this is more personal preference and it's easy to tack on if you want to do that, but I didn't feel it was totally necessary to add it to the stat block. These are just a couple extra ideas I had, but what I really think is most impressive about this creature is how we can use it. So as for the situation I gave from our intro back there, it's very possible your creatures might find a bloated corpse where it suddenly bursts open and all of these flies come out and go after them. This could be an interesting random encounter and it will make your players question every corpse they find for the rest of their lives. And speaking of random encounters, it's also possible the players might come across a small town or caravan that has been totally just wrecked by these things. Maybe the skeletal remains of villagers or merchants are just kind of strewn about, and once they get to the center of this location, all the flies start buzzing around them and form into yet another thing for them to fight. And one thing I want to mention here too that the monster manual specifically states is these creatures do not consume plant life. They consume all manner of flesh, whether it be fresh or rotting. So that means they will eat the flesh of undead. However, they are pure carnivores. They don't mess with plants. The book even goes as far as to specify that other demons don't even like these demons because they'll eat other demons. So the ruined demon truly has no allies. It just kind of seeks to feed itself, but they do not eat plant matter. 
And that's important because what that means is one of these demons might align itself with say a corrupted Trent. Maybe in a swamp like location or a rotting forest, you have an old corrupted Trent and a ruined demon has taken up residence within its bark. So in that way, they kind of become a support unit for a Trent encounter. So when the party encounters this Trent and they get ready for battle, it just kind of raises up its arms and all these flies start coming out and attacking the party. At first, the party might think that it's an attack move of the Trent unless of course one of them is wise enough to know some demons and they realize that this is in fact a ruin demon. But flavorfully I just love the way these two creatures work together. It's a classic evil symbiotic relationship. And since we briefly brought up undead, while they may consume the flesh of undead, they might also follow around a band of skeletal undead knowing that they cause carnage and just kind of feasting on what's left in their wake. So if you use a lot of skeletons or death knights, that kind of thing, basically zombies or undead creatures that don't really have a lot of meat on their bones, a ruined demon might be a good support unit for a group of enemies like that too. And if you happen to be holding a, and if you happen to be playing a game that takes place in the outer planes, Maybe it's actually a demon or a devil who gives a side quest to the players to get rid of this ruined demon. While they may share some kinship, they're just as much a blight to them as they are to any other living creature. And of course, when all said and done, these creatures do just make good dungeon monsters. Imagine your players going into a room that at first glance only seems to have one door, the one they came through, and the walls are totally black. Upon a closer look, it looks like the walls are almost moving. And that's when you realize the walls are actually just covered in giant flies with human faces that coalesce into a creature who you are now in battle with. Just a thought. So that's all I've got today on these festering flesh feasting flies. Hopefully you enjoyed listening to me talk about them and hopefully you find a way to use them in your game either now or some point in the future. If you do like what I do here and you want to support the channel, please subscribe. I usually try to have at least a couple videos every week. And of course, if you do want to use this monster in your game, definitely make sure you check the description below this video where you'll find a link to the stat block just in a Google document. And if you want to keep up on the latest Dungeon Dad news, definitely check out Reddit, Twitter. We have a Discord now. We have all kinds of great chats on there. And I do have a Patreon now too. So if you really want to support the channel and you're able to support it in that way, please check that out. And if you're familiar with my videos already and you're checking out what's behind me and you're thinking, whoa, this doesn't look normal, that's because it isn't. I apologize for the lack of videos in the past week or so, I have just been rearranging my office completely. But that is all done now, so hopefully we'll have no further delays when it comes to making videos for you guys. Anyways, that is all for today, so as always, thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it, and I will see you next time.